us all from killing you and taking what we want. Good morning. What's up, Rory? Jeff in Las Vegas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I guess it's not morning. I just have to wake up. <laughs> oh no, no, it's, we got four minutes till it's afternoon, so you're you're fine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm not too bad. How about yourself, my friend? I'm doing good. You know, I binge watched uh, three episodes last night of uh, the Book of Boba Fett. You know, right. I'm Generation X, so I saw the original Star Wars when I was 11. You know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I saw it. You know, if those next three movies were my life. You know, for anyone from uh, the 70s and the early 80s for Empire and then Jedi. So this is this this is a really great uh, series for a character that everyone loves. I mean, who does not love Boba Fett, right? So getting his own right. song. And uh, so first of all, uh, congratulations. Uh, in the book of Boba Fett, you're a Tusken Raider. You know, yes. take, take us through a typical day on becoming a Tusken Raider. What What is the process? What time did you arrive on set? What did you have to go through? Yeah, well, so being in LA, we have traffic all the time. Um, <laughs> I'm sure even Vegas, that's pretty similar. And so- for us, I think a lot of the times, I think my, my call time was like like 5 a.m. or something like that. And so being up in the valley and going all the way down to Manhattan Beach area, I was always just trying to be a little bit uh, weary of that time <laughs> and making sure, you know, because I feel like no matter what time of day it is, the 4 or 5, it's, it, it can kind of give and take. It, sometimes it'll be really clear and you're able to get down there in like 20, 30 minutes. And other times it takes like, you know, two hours. So, you know, with actors, we always say of... Um, early is on time and on time is late. So you just don't, you want to make sure you're always given that buffer. So I would get there probably about 30 minutes or so early in my call time. So usually it was, I think five or five 30, because we're trying to make sure that we're getting as much daylight as possible. Cause you got to go ahead and get in this costume. So we, we'd uh, be outside um, and go ahead and start getting rubbed up. And so I think I've been saying that it takes about five to 10 minutes, but what I'm failing to kind of mention is that that's after you've already, you yourself as the actor have gone in and you put on your base layers. So you have about, I mean, you have your, your pants and your, your tunic and the top, and then usually there was something else you could kind of put on yourself, but then you got to go on through all the robes and everything else. Um, and so that's a process. And because of how detailed uh, they have been on the program and, and just in Star Wars in general with uh, John and, and Dave, they do a really great job of making sure all those pieces are together. And so you have to have a customer who's doing continuity picks and making sure every little trinket's in the right place. And so that, that takes a bit of time. And then putting on the mask itself uh, can take between five to 10 minutes of it of itself, just trying to make sure that it's aligned correctly, making sure the wrappings are in the correct place. How restrictive so is that mask though? It looks like, can you see out of it? Can you hear or? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because it's like an echo chamber. So you'll be saying something, but you can't tell how loud you are. <laughs> so you might be accidentally yelling not realizing it or, or speaking way too softly. And then once you're inside, if I remember correctly, my mask, um, so each one of them, they had the two eye holes. However, it didn't mean that there was actually eye holes in there for you. Sometimes I think on mine, it was like a, a central. So it was like, I could see through the center and seeing through the two holes, but it, it was tunnel vision. You have no peripheral vision and it just feels really weird and, and uh, a little disorienting sometimes when you're walking because you're you're thinking you're going in in a right place but it, it's it makes your eyes think that it's offset so it just felt a little weird and sometimes you'd see if they do bloopers that uh the tuscans we would accidentally walk into each other and so if that <laughs> happened obviously that doesn't go well for the the take so you'd have to go ahead and do it again well you know of course tuscan raiders the show takes place on tatooine tell us about the desert sequences where did they shoot that was it a lot of hollywood trickery or were you on location somewhere for tatooine I don't want to say exactly where we were shooting it. I think someone actually posted it on, on Twitter. Um, but they are desert it, dry beds, right? There are there are desert beds out in L.A., right? Or There, there are, but we, we actually ended up creating that sort of uh, atmosphere on a, on a parking lot. And so um, they, they took up this whole area, and then there was sand everywhere. So it made <laughs> you feel like you were in the desert. And then you have the California sun that really you know does its job making sure that Sometimes it feels a little unbearable and just bearing down on you. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't like we were actually in the desert or like, you know, in, in um, Joshua Tree or anything like that. It's just they took up this whole area and they they brought in the sand. They brought in the tents, um, they brought in the, the banthas, which was really cool to see. 
and it's it just makes you feel like it's the real world well you know the banthas in the original star wars were elephants you know they put the costumes on elephants right was it all cgi this time or was there animals involved or there were no animals involved they they do have um it's sort of like a, a giant representation of it and it has its own wheels so it's it's really funny seeing it because on one side you'll see the fur and everything that they put on there to make it look real when they're shooting from the camera but if you go on the back side you can see like the mechanical innards of it and you're like oh this is this is interesting this is cool <laughs> how sophisticated so yeah. tell me about uh some scenes with Tamar morrison who plays boba fett i mean did you have a chance to meet him or interact or was he cool uh, in, in terms of interacting with with tim himself i i mean i think there were some passing words but it wasn't like I was I was first team, but he always made sure that he was saying to everyone, like, thank you so much for being a part of this, because if you don't have the background actors, you don't have sort of that life of the scene. You know, if, if it was just him and you're not seeing any context of what that environment is and what um, the world is, and especially when it comes to the Tuscans and understanding like the daily camp life. If you look, you'll see some of us. There's a one guy that ends up cleaning the Bantha's teeth. Um, he did that in Mandalorian, which was really funny. And then there will be some of us who were like cleaning pots and, you know, it just gives more life to the scene as a, as a whole. Um, but Tim, he was always just so energetic and so like, I think ecstatic to just be back into this character. You know, he, he really sees himself as, as him, you know, being able to play as Django and now it's sort of returning as the unaged clone of, of Django Fett as Boba. I think he just had a lot of fun with that. And, and case in point is like, if I remember correctly, there was the scene when we're chasing Boba and it was when we, we catch him and he leaves the camp, Jonah Bennett and him have this whole fight as the Tuscan warrior. And as that's happening, it was originally his stunt double. And then I, it, the stunt double got hurt to some degree. And then Tim was like, I'll, I'll do it. And so he, he just took it on. And it was, he was a badass. And I noticed that. Yeah, I noticed that. And Robert and Robert Rodriguez, you know, director. I, I've interviewed him many times. He, they don't come any cooler than him. Oh yeah, yeah. He brought his guitar, you know, sometimes to set and stuff, <laughs> like like he did in Mandalorian season two. He he just definitely seems sort of like a. He also had this kind of edge to him of like you know, kind of a cowboy, like coming into the saloon sort of thing. Um, he he was he was fun. I I also got to work with John just a little bit, and I remember that first day I was on set, I was trying to make sure I wasn't being a nuisance or anything, and just being like, oh my gosh, like. I don't want to step on any toes. This is so cool. And um, so I'm like trying to be a tough guy and, and just kind of stay in the shade. And they had called for mask breaks so to let people, you know, have a breather. And I was like, you know what? I think, I think I'll be fine. And John comes over and he kind of kicks me in the shoe. And he's like, Hey, like, you know, you're going to get it some shade. Like what's, what's going on? And I was like, <laughs> Oh no, I I'm fine. He's like, you don't have to be a tough guy. Like, you know, <laughs> get some shade. I was like, I'm okay. But I'm like freaking out in the mask. Like this is John Favreau. This is amazing. This is He's part of the, the Mandalorian and like, Oh my gosh, he's doing so many cool things. And you know, so I just, I couldn't move after that. I was just kind of like in, in shock. <laughs> he's a great guy too, man. He's a great guy too. Now yeah. I understand you're involved with the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Is there anything you can tell us or is it all hush hush? and it, it's, I mean, other, other than saying I'm involved and saying that I'm a stormtrooper, there's really not much more than I can That's say. That's enough for a fanboy like me, Roy. <laughs> awesome. Because <laughs> you know, in the Star Wars movies and the reboots, they had like you had Kevin Smith, you had all these celebrities who were just yeah. stormtroopers, right? I mean, right. Like, <laughs> you have to take their word for it. But you know what? Who cares? That is just like for the yeah. ultimate fanboy. I mean, I'm so happy for it. I'm jealous beyond belief. You know, <laughs> I, I, I would play anything just to be in one of these shows. You know, I, I don't care oh, what right. it is. So, but. Uh, well, cool. Well, congratulations, man, on, a, on a, you know, just living the dream, man. We're living through you. So congratulations on that. And uh, we'll talk again soon when you get Obi-Wan up and running. Hey, it sounds good, Jeff. Thank you so much. May the force be with you. Oh, uh, actually, really quick before I forget. Yes. Um, so there is a Tuscan watch party that's going to happen. Um, it's going to be myself and uh, Warren Pru, who was the stand-in for Kenobi, uh, for you, and he's already announced that. And we're going to be doing commentary and stuff. But what's really great is the proceeds of that will be going to the Iowa City Children's Hospital, which is where my, my Star Wars my Star Wars story began all, all those years ago. So when I was six years old, I had a rare fungus that basically took me to the hospital and I went through all these surgeries and everything. But that first day, my mom brought Star Wars A New Hope and seeing Luke's journey and him overcoming these insurmountable obstacles, it gave me the hope that I needed that I was going to be okay. And it was the first time I ever seen Star Wars. So it Star Wars means a lot to me. So it's not just that I'm a fanboy, and like, you know, and I live and breathe this stuff. It's like, it's always had a very meaningful impact on my life. And so with the Tuscan watch party, it's a way for us to also give back, especially to the place where my story began all those years ago.
Absolutely, Roy. Well, I'll, I'll join you. No problem there. So congratulations. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. And we got a great story. And uh, like I said, we'll talk again soon, man. I'm, I'm really happy for you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. <laughs>